many of you asked for this video, so here it is. This is going to be a quick video about the new update for the SSL UF8. As you know, I've done a full review video about the UF8 and I explained what I liked and what I disliked and what I thought they were the shortcomings of this controller and how I felt things could be improved. And in that video, I said that if there's an update for the UF8, I'm going to make a video and tell you about it and I want to keep my word. I wanted to test the update before I made this video, so I did. I actually tested it on my latest single mix where I had over 200 tracks and now I think that I can give you my honest opinion about this new update because I feel that SSL improved things quite a bit with this update of the UFA. Straight away when I saw this update I was very very excited and the reason was because there were two things in this update that were extremely interesting for me. My number one criticism about the UF8 and not just for the UF8 but for any controller out there that uses the Mackie control, this super old protocol to control our DAWs, in my opinion, it's not enough anymore. It's really not enough and for me, it's not acceptable. However, the UF8 is a great controller. It's a great fader controller, it feels amazing. So I kept using it and I placed it back on my desk once this update came out. So let me tell you what's new because I feel they really improved things. And I'm going to also tell you what I think still needs fixing and needs improvements. So as you can see, here I have the project of my latest single. You can listen to it on Apple Music Spotify and all the big stores but basically this is how the session looks like so it's a massive session we're talking about 230 channels and this is when things start becoming problematic with the previous version of the SSL UF8 because we have Mackie control and right here I'm on layer one so I'm still using Mackie control so I can go to my modern 80s kit if you want to support the channel check it out right now there's no way for me to know where I am so if I want to go back to my modern 80s kit here I have to scroll and scroll look look how much I have to scroll until I get to my modern 80s kit so if I want to go, let's say I want to edit my funk guitar here, no way to know, it doesn't update, it doesn't follow the channel selection. So again, I have to go here and wait until I see this illuminated button here. Let's see, look how long it takes me. This is not acceptable for mixing. There's no way you can mix like that. So if I go wanna go back to my, let's say my snare now, again, I have to do this dance or go like with the bank buttons which is not faster either, it's just a pain. But now with this new update, SSL brought something really cool to the table, but the biggest thing for me is the second thing that I'm gonna talk about after this. So now with this new update, you can actually load a plugin on every channel and this plugin is called SSL 360 Link. This is how it looks like. And honestly, it doesn't consume any of your resources. So I've loaded it on all 230 tracks in my project and no problem. Now, when you do this, this means that the SSL will follow the track selection. It's actually what I wanted. And this plugin makes it possible. So what I do is I always add it on slot 16 in Cubase. We have quite a few insert slots, so that's really easy. And this means I have it on every channel in my mix. So now all you need to do is go to a different layer and SSL have done great tutorials about this and basically all you need to do is you need to set up a new layer. So as you can see I have layer 1 which is my Mackie control in this case. I have layer 3 which is my plugin mixer which is what I'm using right now and this communicates with the plugin and I also have another layer that I'm going to talk about in a second that's the MIDI CC layer. Once you set it up and I suggest you watch the tutorials by SSL on how to set this up correctly, then check what happens. Now the SSL UF8 follows the track selection, which means if I go to my riff guitars here, boom, I have my riff guitars right here. If I go to my OB6, boom, 
I am on my OB6 and even more so the LEDs get the colors of my Cubase channels. So this is amazing because now if I want to control my kick drum, I can control my kick drum if I want to control my snare. But if I want to go to my lead vocal right here, immediately I'm controlling this one. Or I can go into my buses right here and immediately I have control over my buses. This was extremely hard to do with this layer. So now we have this and this is much, much better. There's no question about it. To be honest with you, this feels quite a bit like the Softube Console 1 concept, which, as you know, I prefer when it comes to this version's Mackie Control. You still have to add the plugin though, which means that while you're producing and you keep adding new instruments, you have one extra thing to do, which is still not great, but it's an improvement nevertheless. And also now you have your play, your stop, your fast forward, rewind right here, and also the record button right here, which is, again, a nice ergonomic improvement. What I feel can be improved even more? These buttons still don't do anything. I cannot access the right automation. They're right here. Why don't they do anything? And again, many buttons are not being utilized, so I hope that SSL is going to add more features for this kind of layer. The weird thing is that this Mackie control layer has the write and read automation here, so I can enable it, but then I have to switch back and forth just to access this function, which is, yeah, it's one extra step, and when you're mixing, you don't want extra steps. The thing that I was mainly excited about when I heard about this new update and I read what's new was this new layer, the MIDI CC layer. As a film composer, I was extremely excited about this because now what I can do is I can go to this layer here and now I have set up my controllers exactly how I want to. SSL allows you to have full control over these. You can change the colors and everything. So I have modulation wheel, I have expression, I have my filter right here, and this is amazing, but it doesn't work in Cubase. So let's say I open my Retrolog right here. I right click, I learn CC, and I go to my filter. See, I can control it straight away. And you would think, fantastic, this is perfect. You have an 8-fader controller that you can switch at a flick of a button. Great concept, amazing. But now, if I record this, if I start recording here, and I go here to my filter, see, the filter moves. But there's no CC messages being recorded. See that? It, the CC messages reach Retrolog, but they don't reach the recording. So there's nothing there. This is acknowledged on the SSL website. And I have to say, just because I knew you would ask, and I want to be very fair with every company, I reached out to SSL and I said to them, there's this problem. I know you've acknowledged it. Are you going to do anything about this? Are you going to fix it? And they told me that they are working on it and they are going to fix it so that it works properly in Cubase. And for me, this is great news. I wish it was already there, because this is not usable right now. I want to be able to record these CC messages, not just play them. But this is great news. So kudos to SSL for looking into this and constantly improving the UF8. And now, the only thing I need is more integration with Cubase. Create a MIDI remote map so that when you plug this into Cubase, it immediately has all the functions that we need. Pre-gain, filtering, EQ, all of these things. The knobs are there, the buttons are there. Let's make good use of them. And I know for a fact that Cubase users, they're really looking for the best controller. So I would suggest MIDI Remote is the way to go in this case. Even companies that create super affordable MIDI controllers, you know who they are. You plug them into Cubase and they immediately control things straight away. You don't have to set up anything. So this is what I would like to see on the next update, apart from the CC layer being fixed. And I really hope it happens because the UF8 is a nice piece of gear. So in the comments down below, let me know what you think about this new update uh, for the SSL UF8. What do you think could be improved in the next version? So maybe SSL can take a look at your suggestions. If you found this video useful, you can support the channel by checking out my instruments, the Apollo Expansion for Patch Shop and the Modern 80s Kit Max, or use the join button or the thanks button right here, or you can watch this video or this video right here. Thank you so much, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.